And so you graduate law school, and then what's your plan, Tom? You need a plan. You're 22, 23 years old at that time. Right. What's your plan? So I worked, uh, I donated my life in the summers and so forth. There were two giant lawyers in Los Angeles. At that time? At that time. Okay. Elmer Lowe and George West. Mm -hmm. And then there was a third, David Harney. Mm -hmm. And these were the giants. Of these the, were the Tom Girardis of their day. Well, yeah. these really were giants. Yeah. They, were, they were great. So I said I'd work for nothing because you understood somehow that though it wasn't paying you in cash, it was going to pay you in a currency to be cashed at a later date. Talk mm. about the importance of knowing how to do those type of things. Why is it important to surround yourself with mentors, to work for free, to listen, to learn, to educate, to self-educate? Talk about that. You know what, uh, that's the whole trick of success, isn't it? Don't you think? I think it is. In other words, everything is so complicated that unless you have some people who know what the heck they're doing to guide you, it doesn't work. Mm -hmm. But if you do have that, holy Toledo, it does work. You know, Tom, I've said, and, and I think that your life is in certain ways a testimony to this, <clears throat> you know I'm not very smart. But I'm pretty good about watching what smart people do. I think, I think that that's me, Dave. <laughs> so, so now you, you intern for these great attorneys, then what? Well, I was waiting for the bar results, because you take the bar. You took the bar. And um, I did really well in law school. Mm -hmm. I was at the top of the class and all. Right. I then am in New York getting a master's at NYU. Mm -hmm. It's December the 6th or 7th. My mother calls me and says, you didn't make it. Mm. Oh my God. I, didn't, I sat at the end of the bed, what do I do now? Do I go back and try and study for the bar again? And this was terrible. Mm -hmm. Then two hours later, Cindy Morgan, who's the registrar at Loyola, called me and said, well, just let you know you passed the bar. I said, Mrs. Mrs. Morgan, are you sure? My mom, just called My mom just called and said, she said she was looking at the Los Angeles Examiner and they had the name of the kids who passed and I didn't make it. Oh, she said, the Examiner, they only publish the names of kids in Los Angeles. You have a New York address now. So that's the reason. But <laughs> Do you remember those two hours of hell? Sitting there, what am I going to do? Holy Toledo. And, yeah. Now, Tom, you passed the bar. But isn't it true, and at least it's, I guess, maybe part of some folklore, that there are some very good attorneys who didn't pass the bar the first time. Is that true? Oh, that's true. It is true. And it's gotten worse and worse. Really? The bar passage rate, the California bar is the toughest bar to pass. And in the nation? In the nation. 44% mm -hmm. of the young people last year passed the bar. This is after four years of college, three years of... Fifty-six percent of the people who finish in a, a good law school don't pass the bar the first time. Right. Really something. And it's massively competitive to pass that damn test, but yeah. that's really crucial. So you do it. Now, you pass the bar. You go through two hours of agony. Your mom says you didn't make it. You, you, you persevere, you get through that, then what happens next? You're in New York well, City in N at NYU. Right. I finish up at NYU uh, in June, mm -hmm. came back to L.A., now I'm going to, so I started my own firm. Now, by the way, you always knew that you were coming back to Los Angeles? Oh, sure. Okay, great. So you come back to Los Angeles, you say, I'm going to start my own firm. And now, that's audacious. Uh, the office was about as big as this table. Uh, it's a good sized table. Yeah, it is a good sized table. <laughs> and uh, I needed a secretary and I was, this fellow called me and said, Tom, this uh, lady is very good. I think you'd like her. So over came Judith Laurent. Judith Laurent. Very pretty, very nice. She was from Perth, Australia. Mm -hmm. 
she would answer the phone. With an Austrian? Madison, seven, four, six, five, one. Guys were calling just to hear just to this hear, beautiful yeah, girl yeah, answer yeah, the phone. Yeah. Now, where, uh, this first office, where is it? Uh, the Coast Federal Savings Building at Ninth and Hill. Okay, in Los Angeles downtown. Okay. Right, exactly. Great. And uh, then I had a very important case. Okay. And this case taught me a lot. Lawyers talk about their great wins. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to tell you about Keck versus Higgs. Keck versus Higgs. Mrs. Keck was stopped at a stop sign. Mm -hmm. Mr. Higgs negligently ran into the back of her. Fortunately, there wasn't too much damage to the car. Mm -hmm. And Mrs. Keck had to go to the chiropractor and everything. Mm -hmm. And my mom is coming to the trial. Oh. My mom, who made all these novenas that I would pass the bar, all these prayers that I would, she's about to see the culmination of all that all work. All this effort, all this. So I put Mrs. Keck on the stand. I said, Mrs. Keck, does your neck still hurt? Oh, yes. Do you still have to see a chiropractor now and then? Yeah. Oh, yes. Did it hurt like this before? Oh, no. Well, insurance companies knew a little bit more about people than lawyers did. And Charlie Lindbergh was the defense lawyer. He's a baby lawyer, too, then. Later on, becomes head of a big firm. Ms. Keck, that's the same neck that got hurt when your husband ran over the curb and you went to a different chiropractor? Uh, uh, yes. Ms. Keck, is that the same neck that got hurt when your head hit the windshield when your sister ran into the garage door and you went to? Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Isn't it true, Mrs. Keck, that neck of yours is hurt? Well, I, I guess. Finally, it's 11 o'clock. Time for a break. I come walking out. I see my mother. She says, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> and my mom would never come back to another trial. Mom, I didn't know. She would never come back. That was it. She had had her belly full of Tommy the lawyer. Tommy the lawyer. <laughs> yeah. So what did, that, what did that case teach you? You know, it, it taught me something that to this day I recall. Mm -hmm. You know, in all the cases, you got to make sure, sometimes the clients aren't necessarily coming forth with of things they mm -hmm. think are not as good, and by golly, you got to get that. you got to cover all your bases, prepare like sure. hell, because if there's, a, if there's a hole in something, it'll, it'll catch you in the end. So and, this, and this business, you know, in front of a jury trial, those jurors are evaluating the credibility of you and the credibility of your client. And if there are too many bumps in the road, baby, I don't care how it happened, you're not going to win that case. So you've, you've had this firm on a small desk with an Australian receptionist or secretary. And how do you go about getting business at that time? There were a couple of attorneys two or three years ahead of me mm -hmm. uh, that were in the criminal practice. Mm -hmm. So then the people would come to them and they slipped and fell in the ice cream at Savon or things like that. So they'd say, oh, go see my pal Tom. He'll... So those people referred to you. Right, exactly. So now you're talking, I think, or you're starting to instruct us on the power of likability with your colleagues. There was a, a young fellow by the name of Bob Keyes. Bob Keyes. And he started clerking for me. Mm -hmm. So, and, and he was just a young? Young guy, right. And so he then became me. And we thought it looked better if the name was not Tom Girardi, but Girardi Keyes being mm -hmm. the name of the firm. Sure. And so he was with me, and that just started things. He's retired now. Mm -hmm. But all of these... He stayed quite some time. Oh, sure, yeah. Oh, stayed 40 years, right. Mm -hmm. And uh, indeed, we've learned a lot. All of the people here, it's a life sentence to come here. <laughs> it's a hotel you can't check out. Exactly. Mm -hmm.